And so today, let me just start by saying I, to I feel totally inadequate to teach this message. Okay, so if you're expecting me to answer every question, you might as well go right now. Because it won't happen. But um, I've learned this over the years. Sometimes it's not that you have all the answers. It's that you're not afraid to ask the questions. Okay? And the world that we have in today, you may have heard this line before. A really good friend of mine, Carl Lentz, has said it a number of times where he's been on, put on the spot by different television um, hosts that bring him on, and their whole goal would be to, to create some kind of conflict, and he would never take the bait. Instead, he would say, it requires a conversation. Okay? And so there are so many things in our life right now and, you know, sometimes I feel like apologizing to this younger generation for the kind of world that we're leaving you. But no, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because it's amazing opportunity in front of you. Yeah. Amazing opportunity. And you are more than enough. You, you are. You're more than enough. Okay? What you need is wisdom. And usually that comes in packages with little gray hair. <laughs> so you need us and we need you. But together, I read the back of the book, by the way. We win. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so it's a great opportunity in front of us to deal with a really, really mixed up, in many ways, crazy world. Helen and I have been um, teaching relationship, marriage, family for years. And... Back in 2001, actually one week after 9-11, we started a television show called Pure Sex and Relationships. And the reason it was called that was that the people that wanted us to do the show, we had a radio show at that time in Vancouver called The John and Helen Show. And it was on every night from 9 to 10. It was just answering, answering people. It wasn't like Pastor John and Helen. It was like John and Helen on the most secular talk radio show in Vancouver, and people were calling in live. You know what live is? Yeah. It's live. <laughs> There's no editing. And, and asking us every kind of question you can believe. You know, And our world's full of questions about relationships. And the thing that we learned was the, actually the Bible has a lot of answers. And so we, we learned that, and then a, a year later, we were invited to come and do a television show, and at that time, there was a person on television um, called the Sunday Night Sex Show or something like that, and um, it was not positive, and it wasn't biblical in any way, and they wanted us to do a show opposite that, and we did, and it was, it was amazing how many people watched it. I mean, it, in the, the TV guy, they couldn't get the whole thing in, so it just said pure sex. You know, and you can imagine why they tuned in, but, but why they tuned back in the next week is the challenging thing because it was Oma and Opa, you know, grandma and grandpa answering questions. But I learned so much in that season. And the questions, it was on a secular show. Can you imagine the questions that we got? There wasn't a week where I wasn't challenged out of my mind. How do you answer this question? And over the years now, uh, it shows evolved different ways, but now we do a show called Sex, Love, and Relationships. There we go again. How, how come you get coined as that, you know, where'd, we, where'd you get this gig? <laughs> well, we've been married for 45 years and, and we figured a few things out. But anyway, um, how do you answer some of these questions? Well, this is what I've learned over the years. And so I, I just, ahead of time, I, I'll just say my, my purpose is not to offend anybody. I don't want to offend anyone in the room. Um, I do not know your background. I don't know your experiences. I don't know where you've come from. I, for every single person, I have to say, I, I'm, I just admit I'm ignorant. But I don't want to be stupid. Stupid is I don't want to know, I don't care to know, or I think I know, okay? And I think that's a good attitude to have for everybody. I first learned this from a, a great um, pastor friend. He was Afro-American, and this white guy comes up and says, I don't have a problem with race because I don't see color. He says, are you blind? Yeah. <laughs> we are different color. See, that doesn't work 
just playing ignorant. What works is recognize you don't know, but you want to know. And that works for every single human being on the planet. So how do you navigate these social challenging issues? At first, I was going to call this message divide and conquer. Why? Because that is the devil's tactic. Divide and conquer. If you can understand that tactic, you can win the battle. Really. He always, always, in every way, and I'll, I'll bring it to some really personal things that affect everyone in the room, but no matter what the, the issue is, his goal is divide and conquer. Right. What you have to recognize, number one, is that you do have an enemy, yeah. okay? And it's not people. Your enemy's not the, whoever the people group is. Your enemy is the devil. Yes. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief, the devil, has come. And I, and I like this. Because it makes it really clear. For one reason only. Only, only, only one reason. To kill, steal, and destroy. And he doesn't come to some. He comes to anyone. He's against everyone. And then Peter says it a little bit clearer in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, that's the devil, you have an enemy. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And then 2 Corinthians 2, 1, Paul says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, don't be stupid, okay? Recognize you have an enemy. And don't be ignorant of his devices. He has a strategy. And his strategy is divine. And he's like a roaring lion. Now, I've been to Africa many times, and I've actually been on two safaris. One of them was in the Serengeti during that crazy, if you've ever watched Planet Earth, where there's the migration happening, and at one glance, you can see 100,000 animals. I'm not kidding. It's the most densely populated animal on the planet. And there's lions all over the place, prides of lions, and you can see them, and, and you know, most of the tourists want to see that. We want to go and watch the lions take down, you know, and what they do is they're, they're, they'll work together, but their goal is to separate out. They want to separate out the weak, the young, the lame, in other words, the stupid. And then they take them out. And God can't take you out if he can't separate you. I mean, the devil can't take you out if he can't separate you out. His goal is first to separate you out Draw a line. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Whoever you are, don't do the thing where you draw a line and it's us and them. Because yeah. as soon as you do, he takes you out. Because we're all born human beings on the planet together. God loves every single one of us. Yeah, on. We're on this journey. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. I haven't arrived. You haven't arrived. Yeah. But as soon as we draw a line, yeah. if he can get, separate you out, he can take you out. Yeah. Right. It's a picture of our everyday spiritual life. The lion is the devil, and it's, his hope is to separate us out. So why is his strategy divide and conquer? Because you have to understand you've got power yeah. Yeah. together. Yeah. Right. There's power in unity. That's the place of power. It's the place of unity. Psalms 133. I love it. Isn't it great? Isn't it great when brethren dwell together in unity? And verse 3 says that's where God commands his blessing. When God can, commands his blessing, I don't care what the devil says. Yeah. The blessing of God is coming. Yeah. Where is that place? The place of unity. If you think about the church, we were birthed in the place of unity. Acts 2, verse 1 says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. And suddenly. <laughs> I love suddenlies, don't you? Do you know when you expect suddenlies? All the time. You should always be expecting suddenlies. Suddenlies is surprise. And, you know, we start, every year we start with a, a, a word. We believe God's given us a word. And my word this year was surprise. I believe God wants to surprise you with his gift of joy. The word grace, I love the word grace. In the Greek, it's the word charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. 
C-H-A-R is the word joy. I-S is added on for surprise. Add two more letters, M-A, and you got gift. So my favorite definition of grace is God's surprise gift of joy. He just really wants to touch your life, touch your heart, change whatever happens. The place of power, place of unity, Matthew 18, 19. Again, Jesus said, if any two of you agrees on earth is touching anything, it would be done by my Father in heaven, that place of agreement. Okay? So recognize we have an enemy and recognize that he is against every human being. Not just some, every. Why? Well, go right back to the beginning. Genesis 1. Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, let... Do you know what the next word is? Then God said, let... It's not up there, but you know what the word is. Us. Everybody say us. us. Then God said, let us create man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Oh, there's so much in that one verse. Let us. So God, I thought was only one God. Yeah, there is only one God, but three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three unique, amazing, not one better than the other. Each one amazing, but one. That's the picture of relationship. He said, let us create man in our image. Relationship is the image of God. The devil hates your relationships. And the way he divides your relationships is with a line. If he can get us to draw a line, us and them, I refuse to draw a line. I refuse to, to, to create an us and them. Because as soon as you do, he wins. Why? Because he's against you, but he's against every human being. We all have an enemy, okay? And if you draw a line, so you're against somebody, anybody, you're on his team. You just got on his team. Because he's against everybody. And what do you do when you draw a line? You want people to join your side. Come Help me, get, come on my side. What you've just done is you're, you're fighting his war, which is divide and conquer. You're on his team and you're, you're being used by the enemy. Refuse to draw a line. So over the years, I mean, I don't have all the answers. I'm telling you, it's a crazy, challenging world. I really don't. I really, really don't have all the answers. But what I've tried to understand is keep the main thing the main thing. The main thing is God is love. God loves you. God loves me. And Jesus is Lord. And he's the one that teaches us and leads us. And I'm trusting him to help lead together so we can do this thing called life together. So, first thing you have to do is decide you'll never draw a line, which means you'll never label somebody. As soon as you label somebody, you draw a line. You'll never divide. You'll never judge. You know, if you could do one thing that would help for the rest of your life in every relationship, it would be get rid of this. Don't cut your fingers off. Just get rid of this. This is called the pointed finger. This is what I, I, I accuse you of. Because as soon as you have a pointed finger, you've drawn a line. Instead, always use this this way. You know, for instance, our society today, our, our, our generation today is really into being authentic, which is a great thing. Really. And it's about, I need to be authentic to me. What does that mean? Well, whatever I think I am, whatever I feel I am, 
And, and I think being authentic is really important. What I don't think and what I don't agree with, but again, it's the way I think. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm telling you what I think. I think it doesn't start with you. See, I read the Bible, the first verse in the Bible says, in the beginning, me, no. <laughs> in the beginning, I, no. In the beginning, God. Yeah. But I say that to say this, not really to teach you that lesson, but to teach you this lesson. I know so many Christians that use that verse. It's not about you. It's in the beginning, God. What, you just use this thing again. Don't do that. Turn it this way. This is what I deal with. This is what I believe. Because I got a lot of dumb feelings. I do. But you know what? I don't listen to my feelings to figure out who I am. I am not a victim of my feelings. I refuse to be a victim. Ah, yeah, I, I, I confess, I deal with some feelings. Anybody else in the room? All the rest of you liars? We all do. We all do. Just use it this way. Oh, so important. So, Understanding that Christianity is not a formula. It's not a do's and don'ts. It's not a list of this is what we do, this is not what we do. No, Christianity is not a human doing. It's a human being. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a list. It's called the law, right? And people say, well, the law is the problem. No, the law was not the problem. No, the law was given because of you and I were the problem. The law was to be a mirror. Really, that's the Old Testament law, to be a mirror to, that you could see, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, I need a savior. Yeah. Now, if you're looking in a mirror and you don't like what you see, it's not the mirror's problem. <laughs> don't smash the mirror. Yeah. That's, what, that's what the list is, but to recognize we need a savior. Christianity is a, is a relationship. You know, Jesus said you need to carry your own cross. Yeah. What, what, why would he say own? Why didn't he just say carry the cross? Because it's different for everybody. Yeah. I don't know your cross. You don't know my cross, but we all got a cross. And you can't compare crosses. Yeah. My cross is bigger than your cross. <laughs> yeah. In other words... Nobody's got a harder life than the next one. Everybody's got a tough life. Why? Because we all got the same enemy. Yeah. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy everybody. Yeah. Everybody. We need to work together. Because that's where the place of unity is, the place of power. Yeah. You know, in a simple everyday relationship, and I'll come back to this, but really between you and whoever else, whether it's in marriage and family and friendship, whatever, what the line that tries to get between us is called an offense. And if you let yourself get offended, what do you mean let yourself? Somebody offended me. No, <laughs> it's a choice. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know you don't like to hear that. And I, I don't like to hear it either because I'm 66 and I'm still stupid. Because <laughs> I bit the bait not long ago and I got offended. But when you get offended, offense means there's a perpetrator. Means you're a victim. Means there's a line. And that's how the devil takes out relationships. So what do we do? First of all, refuse to draw a line. Secondly, seek mutuality. Seek to understand how we're in the same, we're in this life together, we're in the battle together, we're on the same team. Hello? We're on the same team. Now, I don't know if the world will ever get crazy enough to think like, you know, maybe dogs and cats are on the same team, but, but <laughs> as far as I know, human beings, we're on the same team. Okay, so what you do, listen, if you're, if you're in a challenge, there's a, there's a relationship challenge you have, it's like this. You're going to have a fight. We're going to have an argument. Where you, somebody's going to come out winning. And in that, I promise you, no one wins. No one wins. What you need to do before you're in this ring, a boxing ring, my corner, she's in that corner, bang. The, before the whistle goes, the bell rings, walk around the court, put your arm around that person, identify how you're on the same team. Right. Right. Then identify the issue. 
Okay? Never elevate the issue above the relationship. Never elevate the issue above the relationship. I'm not going to die on the hill of, of issues. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. It's a relationship. Yeah. And he's for everybody. <laughs> okay, so walk around the court, figure out how you're on the same team. You don't have to agree on everything to walk in love. Yeah. Right. I don't agree with everything Helen says. <laughs> and I love her. We've been married for 45 years. Somehow it's working. Yeah. You don't have to agree on everything. Yeah. We just have to get rid of this, yeah. which is telling everybody else how to think and let people know you can think this way. Yes. And when we actually do that, we can become part of the answer, not part of the problem. <laughs> Learn to turn conflict not into combat, yeah. Yeah. Really good. but into conquer. Yeah. Yeah. What? The issue. The enemy. I figured the best way to be heard over the years is to listen. And that's where what Carl says it deserves a, a conversation, where this comes in. Um, a conversation is listening to understand. I know I'm ignorant, but I don't want to be stupid. Help me yeah. understand. Wow. I wish someone would have told me that 30, 40 years ago. I mean, just you'd have to slap me a number of times to get my attention. <laughs> but please, tell me that. Yeah. And when you listen to understand, you will actually take the walls down. And the best way to receive is to give. If you give your ears to listen, you'll get ears back to listen. Yeah. And that's called conversation. Yeah. That's where the two, we can put our heads together and we can come up with, how do we deal with this issue? And... Just to be real, really transparent with you, I have someone in my world that I love dearly, absolutely adore, and she wants to be a he. I don't understand. I mean, I'm 66. I grew up in this utopia in the 50s, 60s. I mean, I was 13 when the Beatles hit. Oh, it's the best thing in the world. She loves you, yeah, yeah. I, I was nuts. When I was a kid, a dirty word was divorce. Really. It was crazy. And, and listen to me, I'm not, this is no judgmental thing. This is just telling you where I'm at. I never even heard the word homosexual until I was 16. Really? Such a different world. So, so now I'm a grandfather you know, and, and I've got, you know, lots of kids around me and there's this one, you know, amazing person. And so what do you do? I'll tell you what I did. I said, honey, I love you. Nothing you could ever do could change that. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't deny your feelings. I don't deny your experiences. Just understand. I don't understand. Help me. Do you know what that begins? A conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That begins a conversation. Yeah. And in that conversation, we can, we can journey together. And that's the most important thing. Let us help each other. To me, the truth about every relationship is that we actually want to get to know them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've probably heard me teach before uh, about dating. Dating my daughters. Biggest revelation in relationship. My oldest daughter, who's now our lead pastor, she was eight years old. I took her on a date, and it was just a great idea. Never heard of it before, but on the date, uh, we get to the place where we're finished eating. Uh, now what? Uh, how do you talk to an eight-year-old? I don't know. <laughs> I stumbled along, asked her a few questions, and I made this amazing discovery. Everyone's got their own world. And it's just as important as yours. And they want you in. But you don't get in unless you want to understand. You don't get in because you're going to tell them what to do. 
You're, gonna, you're, you're not going to get in because you're going to correct them. Wow. You're going to get in because I want to understand. And that's basically the, the, what every conversation is about. A true relationship is all about, I want to understand. When you get to that place, you need to leave with the takeaway. And that is how I can help you. Okay, it's not, it's, it's not just about, you know, having a relationship. It's about let's help each other take this journey together. Yeah. And again, like I said, this is the worst thing. Turn this thing around. And the way I've learned to do over the years is start by, instead of telling them how great you are and everything you've done right, tell them all the dumb things. Yeah, yeah. Give them something that lets you actually recognize how human you are. Yeah. Relate with your humanity. Anybody human in this room? Because when you relate with your humanity, what you immediately do is you lift up Jesus. You lift up his grace and his goodness and his love. And it's only because of him. And that's what we want to do because he's the only one that's going to change this thing. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. You're totally inadequate. I am too, but with him, wow, what an opportunity. We have a world that is hurting. You know, our world's hurting. And for real, real reasons. And so if we sit and we listen and we, 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 we actually want to understand so that we can help, we hopefully can give them something. And the something that I would do is one step. Really... Um, Try to stay away from trying to tell someone how to do their whole life. Yeah. Break it down to one step. Yeah. Why? There's a miracle in a step. There's a miracle in a step. Yeah, it's so good. And usually it's something like, and I've done this so many times on our TV show, it's something like, well, I totally understand where you're coming from. I, I, I can see that. I've done that. I've been there. This is what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I made one choice that changed everything. Why don't you try this? See, that's what testimony is. Testimony is getting on people's level, showing them the answer, and then telling them the next step. And if you can, the next step, both of you, you know, it's not like you got it all figured out, but the next step brings hope. And basically, that's what's needed in our world. We're, We're in a hopeless, in so many ways, broken world, and hurting people hurt people. So let me bring it to a very personal application, which is for every one of us, this would apply. It doesn't have to be a, you know, something out there with our crazy world we live in, which is so different. Could be just your relationship with your friend. And that is the opportunity to get offended because opportunities will come. I used to know a friend that said, if you've never been offended, just come up to me after service. I'll personally offend you. I still don't know why that would make any sense, but everybody laughed. Um, But the thing is, everyone's got opportunity to be offended. And not too long ago, I mean, I'm 66. You'd think I'd figured this out yet. Um, And, you know, but teachings, I know, don't draw a line. I know that. But you know what an offense is? In the Bible, the word offense is actually the word scandalon, which is the word for a trap. It's like there's, there's a trap been set, but a trap's not a trap without bait. And so there is bait. Oh, the bait is so, mmm, mm. You just want to take a bite. It's so, so good. It's like somebody done somebody wrong song, you know. You know what they did to me. And not too long ago, I mean, I, I just, you know, poured my life out, gave my heart, I was involved with this, and, and, and I found myself pushed to the back. And, and I just, I got offended. I really did. I got offended. And, and while I was offended, okay, my wife kept saying to me, you're offended. I'm not, not, I'm not offended. <laughs> yes, you are, you're offended. I'm not offended. <laughs> and then she'd say things like, oh, I hate this. She'd say things like, you're bigger than that. <laughs> say, John, why don't you take the high road? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Because basically that's what it is. There's always a high road and a low road. I want the low road. I want to be offended. I want, I want to be hurt. But do you know that it is your choice to be offended? 
Everyone has the opportunity. And sometimes you get offended, but don't stay offended. Let go. Don't stay offended, because when you're offended, you're on the wrong team. And what I found myself was I drew a line, and I got offended. And then I, actually, I texted a number of people. You're one of them. <laughs> and, and told them, you know, something wrong, something done, something, you know, this. And, and uh, I was so glad there was a, a few friends that royally rebuked me. <laughs> royally rebuked me. I mean, they, they rebuked me like I was not 60, but 66, like, more like six. I deserved it. And I just saw instantly what happened. I drew a line, and then I tried to get my friends to come on my side. Which is, I'm just on the devil's team, playing his game, which is called division. Because in the place of unity, there's a place of power, but in the place of division, he wins. So it's always about divide and conquer. So in your relationships, if you're having, if you're offended by somebody, Deal with it. Don't continue in that place. Because you're not in the place of power. You're not, you're not going forward. And if I said anything to offend you, please. I didn't say it because I want to offend you. Like, for instance, okay, people say, well, so you just compromise? We've never compromised what we believe. We've been on television for 30 years and never had a problem. And yet, over and over again, we have clearly stated, this is what we believe. Never, this is what you need to do. This is what we believe. You see, if you, if you refuse to do, do this, you refuse to judge. And as long as you don't judge, you, you don't create, pe people don't put walls up. When you do this, there's no wall. And I've stated over the years that we believe, because we're doing the show called Sex love and relationships, pure sex. So what do you believe about sex? And often you get the question, what is sex? <laughs> it's the celebration of love, the physical celebration of love. And sex, God's way, is for marriage. And marriage, I believe, is between a man and a woman for life. Now, does that fit everybody? No. But you need to recognize what you believe. Because if, if I don't accuse you for what you believe, you're not going to accuse me for what I believe. But together, we can figure this out. And that's what has to happen in our world today. I told you I was totally inadequate for this. But for every single one of us, just refuse to draw a line. Okay, we're in this thing together. Let's figure it out. Everybody, you're ignorant. Don't be stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Can I invite you to close your eyes, bow your head, take a moment of silence, a moment of privacy. Just listen, what's God saying to you? What's beating in your heart? There are people in your world that you need to forgive, let go of. Loud offense. They don't recognize where the enemy's working. The beginning of all, all healthy relationship is God. Christianity is not a formula, but it is a relationship. And it's the beginning. How can you give what you don't have? But we receive His love so we can love with His love. God has the answers. And he's not keeping them from us. He's keeping them for us. So if you're here today and your relationship with God is not what it could be, not what it should be, don't leave like that. It's a choice. I would love to pray a simple prayer with you, for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'll pray for you right where you sit. But you and only you can make the choice. If you've never asked Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord. I need you. I give you my life. I want to live the rest of my life for eternity with you. Then today's your day. If you've done that, and, and maybe maybe you recognize that, that you just get caught up with everything, and, and he's not Lord of all in your life. 
Jesus is somewhere in the background and you need to get back to the place where he is Lord of all. Could I pray for you? Don't leave like that. Change it right now. So all over the room, with your heads bowed, no one looking around, you say, that's me. Include me in that prayer. I don't want to leave the way I came. I want my relationship with God right today. If that's you, wherever you're sitting, slip your hand up. Could I pray for you? Could I include you in this prayer today? All over the room, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Who else? This is a choice for you. It's between you and God. I'm asking you to make the choice, that's all. Because sometimes we think it's just going to, thank you. Just do it in our heads and our hearts and God knows good enough. Actually, if it's a choice, just thank you. You just can lift your hand and let you know and God know. Is there anyone else? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All over the room, hands are up. Anyone else? Okay, you put your hands down. I'm going to invite everybody to pray the simple prayer. Let me give you the words. Let's talk to God together. As you say this, just mean it with your heart. Everyone say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me just the way I am. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord. I give you my life. Help me do this right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, church. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. If you'd like more information about Celebration Church, head over to our website at celebrationedmonton.com. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe.